even though some of the earliest technology companies no longer exist, their creations are still used today. Some notable examples include the transistor, which is a brainchild of Bell Labs, and the integrated circuit that is pioneered by Fairchild Semiconductor, but neither company is still around. The same is true for Digital Equipment Corporation. The DNA of all modern desktop and laptop computing devices trace back to this long-forgotten company. In the year 1957, Ken Olson and Harlan Anderson met at MIT's Lincoln Laboratory and founded Digital Equipment Corporation. They observed that students preferred interactive computing machines which allowed them to input data and receive real-time feedback over batch processing machines. Olson and Anderson also realized that interactive machines could be made and sold more cheaply, making them more appealing to researchers and scientists. Initially, Olson and Anderson Anderson were advised to focus on equipment rather than computers because investors were concerned about the future of computing. They followed this advice and finalized their plan for digital. The company received $70,000 to launch their new venture. To keep costs low for both customers and the company, Olson and Anderson set up shop in an old wool mill in Maynard, Massachusetts. Even though Digital was originally founded to make small digital modules, the company execs later discovered that they can also make mini computers that were smaller and less powerful but cheaper than mainframes which were common for that era. Following this discovery, in 1977, Digital introduced the VAX, a new line of mini-computers that featured a 32-bit instruction set architecture and a virtual memory. VMS, the operating system for these computers, was a multi-user, multitasking system that offered features that we now take for granted, such as virtual memory, file sharing, and networking. It had a wide range of third-party software packages available, which made it the most popular system in its class. Prior to the late 70s, computers were only designed to be single-user and they weren't set up to be multi-user environment. This all changed when VAX and VMS were introduced to the scene and forever changed the computing landscape. Digital featured the VAX 11780 in 1977. It was the first computer that could execute 1 million instruction set per second, and it was also the first computer that was affordable enough for many businesses and schools to buy. Besides reaching to a new height for computation, this first iteration of VAX computers were very reliable and user-friendly for that time. This was a momentous occasion for mainstream consumers when the VAX 11780 was released because it helped to make computers more accessible for many. The VAX 11780 was the base system for computer speed benchmarks for many years. It supported several programming languages including Fortran 77, COBOL, Blizz 32, PL1, BASIC and others. The VAX 11 series was sold until 1988 and included various systems from small VAX Station 1 up to the VAX 9000 mainframe. A dual processor version of these VAX machines was launched in 1981. Digital eventually discontinued the VAX 11 line of computers after experiencing a successful spell with this series. Digital also ventured into the personal computing space with its Rainbow 100 mini computers released in 1984. This, however, proved to be a futile endeavor as Digital discovered that IBM's stronghold on the personal computer market segment was unshakable. The failure of breaking into the PC market will ultimately play a pivotal role in Digital's eventual demise. Before the fall happened though, Digital enjoyed a success many would kill for. In 1984, the company introduced the VAX 8000 series, a high-end lineup of computing machines. The VAX 8600, codenamed Venus, was an instant bestseller. The processors in this line of VAX computers implemented the VAX instruction set architecture. The performance was doubled compared to its earlier 117080 model. At its glory days, Digital was considered one of the top computing companies when it was ranked as the second largest computer company following IBM. During that period, it has earned more than $11 billion in revenue, had a workforce over 120,000 employees. The 90s however started the downward spiral that ended the company's fortunes. 
as I alluded to above, the failure to claim a significant portion of the PC market segment played a major role in catapulting this great American company to oblivion. When the 90s kicked in, not only digital but also IBM struggled to maintain their historic dominance as the industry deviated away from mainframes and mini computers and towards personal computers and workstations. As a result, digital recorded its first quarterly loss since its inception. This unfortunately led the company to significantly reduce its workforce and close operations for good. After a string of fiscal losses, Kenneth H. Olson, the founder and president of the Digital Equipment Corporation, decided to retire. Digital released the Alpha AXP, a 64-bit risk-based computers in 1992. But this move did little to change the fortunes of the company. After some dying minute moves such as introducing Alta Vista, one of the first search engines in history, Digital was finally folded in 1998 and eventually acquired by Compaq. This was the largest tech merger at that time. Compaq itself was acquired by Hewlett Packard in 2002 because of its own financial difficulties. Digital's legacy permeated to almost all tech companies of the modern day. It left such a lasting imprint on computing as we continue to know it, whether its contribution to computers, software, microchips or even the internet itself. The failure of company execs to foresee the changing landscape in tech was a tipping point that led to the collapse of this great company. Digital's legacy, however, will endure because it had the courage to introduce computing solutions that were both powerful and affordable when others were too timid to do so.